Hello, and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. The SEC has dropped its complaint against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, two executives at Ripple. They have finally given up and thrown down the towel. They had no chance in hell if this got to trial in April of 2024, so this is an embarrassing loss for them. The party's finished, this isn't going anywhere. This news has just come out. Let's see, attorney and XRP community member James K. Fillon broke the news. This, however, is outstandingly good news. And to think, all this started in December of 2020, and we haven't stopped moving since. Also, the SEC didn't stop with just suing Ripple, they also went after Garlinghouse and Larson for making the statements they did. There had never been a case like this, before that didn't include fraud. It was obviously extortionate, and a clear attempt at intimidation. The SEC's current situation is one of complete and utter shame and failure. Now I'll fill you in on the details. But first, let's back up a bit, please note that I am not a financial expert and am not providing any sort of financial guidance. Also, you shouldn't make any financial decisions based on the content of my YouTube videos, I merely love talking about cryptocurrency as a pastime. The price of XRP did increase in response to this announcement. I have no idea what will happen, but it has gone up, up 4.32% in the previous hour, and up as high as 6.25% just before I started shooting this video. The news comes as a surprise to me. Despite the fact that it's great. If you already knew that XRP was obtaining legal clarification, I wouldn't expect the price to be affected. While the price of XRP did nearly double in a matter of hours as a result, this is by no means the end of the world for the cryptocurrency. Nonetheless, it is incredible to witness everything. The XRP community and the cryptocurrency industry as a whole are reacting favorably to the news that attorney James K. Filing broke it. The following is the text of the letter that SEC attorney Jorge Tenrero submitted to Judge Torres, respectable magistrate, Defendant Torres, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, politely informs the court that it has reached a settlement with defendants Christian Larson and Bradley Garland Garland House regarding the SEC's pending claims against them. The settlement ends the trial, scheduled for July 13, 2023, in which the SEC alleged that Larson and Garland House had aided and abetted Ripple's violations of Section 5 of the Securities Act of 1933, Title 19. XRP institutional sales have begun to ripple out. The parties have agreed to dismiss this claim with prejudice in accordance with Rule Yada 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 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. The trial on this claim and moots, originally set for October 3, 2023, is moot as a result of the parties' mutual decision to voluntarily dismiss the case. I'll halt for a second to make a point. This is a categorical rejection. We are not reaching an agreement. This is a categorical rejection. The SEC has given up, overcharges, and bullies, and they had no business doing this in the first place. The situation is not ideal, in their favor. The SEC is on the wrong side of history, and this entire legal procedure has been a disaster for them. They're also monstrous and filthy. The SEC and Ripple also plan to discuss a possible briefing timetable related to the case's outstanding problem, as stated in this document. Until November 9, 2023, please advise what penalties should be levied against Ripple for its Section 5 offenses relating to its institutional sales of XRP. You can either provide such a timetable to the court or, if the parties can't settle on one, you can ask the judge for a contested briefing schedule. Now, all we have to do is figure out what the appropriate cures are for that particular segment of the problem. We don't care about the loss of Ripple because XRP was recently ruled not to be a security, making secondary market trades legal. You guys, like, know the full deal. I won't bother going over that again. But there are two possibilities, either they reach an agreement here, in which case everything will be resolved. The SEC might still file an appeal, though. Even if the SEC appeals the final ruling, it is feasible, but not entirely clear. Even if it were limited to Ripple-related transactions, 
that wouldn't change the fact that XRP is not a security. There would be no effect on secondary market trades or anything similar. Therefore, even if the SEC were to file an appeal, and even if they were to file an appeal, and even if one were to happen, which, again, I think is a fantasy realm thing that they do, it would be of no consequence to us. For the sake of the Ripple's transaction, this is important, nonetheless, we are already interested in working with people of this type. Unless anything absolutely catastrophic happens, I think we're safe for the time being. Now look at this from Stuart, all the rambunctious, chief legal officer at Ripple's. He posted it on Platform X and said that the SEC had capitulated by dropping all charges against our executives because they had made a serious mistake in going after Brad and Chris personally. We are not reaching an agreement. The SEC has given up at this point. That's three victories in a row for Ripple, including the verdict on July 13 that XRP is not a security as a matter of law. On October 3, a court rejected the SEC's request for an interlocutory appeal. Now this is a salutary, the thing is it makes one happy to see. It gives me great pleasure when these jerks are defeated. I get that they were the ones to write this off, but they did so knowing full well that they had nothing to offer. They're the ones who end up losing here. Obviously, they were aware of it. Holy hallelujah, indeed. You're going to adore this material. Folks. You're going to adore this. You were looking at the first response from attorney John Dean. As I mentioned before, the SEC was never going to take this to trial, and he republished the news from the attorney file with a note from John Dean saying as much. The SEC case against Brad and Chris has been dismissed with prejudice, meaning that they will not have to go to trial next April. We've reached the punishment phase of the case. Then we'll know exactly who is appealing what. To refresh your memory, here's a piece dated June 14, a full week before XRP's legal status was settled. You sent me this today. The CEO and Chris Larson feel the repercussions of the SEC bullies. According to John Deaton, this is their reply, and I won't even bother with the article. However, in case you needed a refresher on how ludicrous this is, here it is. And you can only imagine, I mean, the fact that Brad Garland House and Chris Larson, they decided they were going to see this through that that speaks to their character, and to their own emotional and mental fortitude, because they did have an opportunity for settlement before the, the suit was actually filed. And I have no idea what that would entail, because it hasn't been made public. The XRP community and Ripple as a whole would have likely suffered as a result, that's why they were trying to bully Brad and Chris. They weren't cooperating, even though they clearly might have agreed to the stipulations. Despite these baseless accusations, Brad stated, nope, we're going to stick this thing out. So, you know, props to Brad Garlinhouse and also to Chris Larson for seeing this through to the end. And so, a month before XRP got legal certainty, Here's what Brad Garland House had to say on June 13th. When confronted with such strong opposition to what he was about to say and how we created this phony test, the regulator's response was completely inexcusable. By the way, he's referring to the Bill Hindman Ethereum for past speech, and then Brad Garland House decided to go ahead and throw an entire industry into chaos by having the SEC sue Chris Larson and me personally for allegedly selling unregistered securities. I really don't know how to put into polite terms how appalling it is that politics have led to this kind of overreach. Considering how the SEC has used enforcement actions to effectively weaponize the ambiguity in the rules since this speech was delivered, it shouldn't come as a surprise that we can dismiss their claims that they need do little more than show up and sign up in bad faith. That's the case, of course. Solicitor Deaton republished it on June 14th of this year. According to his article, the CEO of Ripple is exhibiting remarkable self-control as a result of a search that lasted 2.5 years. Despite the fact that SEC enforcement lawyers were unable to decide whether or not XRP was a security in 2018 when they wrote the XRP memo and that the same enforcement lawyers were permitted to own and trade XRP until 2019, 
He was sued personally in a non-fraud case and accused of recklessness for not knowing that XRP was a security in 2015. However, he acted carelessly. Also, remember that even though he and Chris Larson gave the SEC proof of every XRP sale they'd done, they still got in trouble. The SEC continued to intimidate and harass them by demanding records of all their financial dealings with banks and credit-slash-debit card companies dating back 10 years. Of course, Judge Nepper put a stop to that outrageous overreach, but I doubt I could be quite that nicely stern. In fact, I had forgotten about it entirely until I read this from the lawyer. Do you keep this in mind? In retrospect, I realized that I was hiding. For some reason, which has nothing to do with XRP, the SEC apparently wanted access to every credit card and debit card statement produced by Garland House and Larson over the past decade. What in the ever-loving house would have them look at the groceries he bought if they were investigating XRP? What a horrible, disgusting agency. They have absolutely no shame at all. They are jerks, that's for sure. They're just people, and people are gross and horrible. In fact, I'm being somewhat cavalier with the word human in that last clause. It's great that this issue has been resolved and XRP has been classified as not a security. The top brass are free from blame now that they have been exonerated of charges they never deserved. The action smacked of bullying, plain and simple. But you know, what's, what should be done has been done to this point. We'll see if the SEC ends up ends up appealing the Ripple case. It's possible, though, that they'll be able to settle on mutually satisfactory terms. I suppose the SEC realizes they're hopeless, so that's that. They have no intention of doing so, although they are free to file an appeal. And by the time it gets there, which is doubtful, who knows where it will be. If that happens, it's safe to assume Gary Gensler won't be leading the Southeastern Conference for much longer. In any case, feel free to do a mini victory dance of your own now that you finally have an answer to your question. Give me your feedback. However, that's all there is to it. This is only a short video. I wasn't going to record a new video today, but in light of this development, of course I will. Wow, that's wonderful news. The feeling is mutual. No, I don't give out financial advice. Nothing I say should influence your buying or selling decisions. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.